Hey everybody, video here for you today. We're going to talk about some Ice Age flooding. First, let's just review. Let's go down to Camas Prairie here, Montana. It's been a while since I made a video on this. I know a lot of you saw Randall Carlson on Joe Rogan's show, maybe both times, but here, evidence of Ice Age flooding, the ripples in the land. These are about 30 feet high, maybe 40, and they go for miles. Evidence that just a vast amount of water rolled through here a long time ago, flowed south. But when looking into this time period, what was going on on Earth? Well, you gotta investigate the whole Earth. But here, evidence, just like in a small stream of sand, when a current goes through, ripples, well, on a much wider magnitude here, these ripples were the result of a mass of water going through here that was maybe a thousand feet deep. Here's a PDF I found, the catastrophic flood features at Camas Prairie, Montana. It says Camas Prairie preserve landforms and bedforms that document catastrophic currents at the bottom of glacial Lake Missoula when its glacier dam broke. Although similar features occur in the Scablands of eastern Washington, the currents there were channeled floods that flowed downhill. Here, the sublake currents often flowed uphill. Sim similar catastrophic lake bottom currents have been documented elsewhere only in the Altai flood of Siberia. So let's go look there. Camas Prairie here in Montana, evidence of a, just a major flood, one that we really can't even wrap our head around. Let's go over to Russia now. Let's take a look at that other area of the world where a flood just like this one seemed to occur. This is the Altai Republic right down here. Geologists have recorded a catastrophic flood. This is one of the areas right down here massive wall of water came through here at the end of the ice age you can tell just by the, by the canyon here how wide it is evidence of a massive massive amount of water we can't even wrap our head around it really down here in this area there are ripples and i mean massive ripples here that cover the landscape in this area we go for a ways but this is just what occurred in Camas Prairie down here. The Katoon River flows through here, and here's some alluvial terraces that were formed by this catastrophic flooding here. Here's a look at the area. These flood ripples, evidence of a massive amount of water flowing through here. We'll talk about how much in a second, but this looks a lot like Camas Prairie. Evidence of a great flood here occurring at the end of the Ice Age. Here's what they say are diluvial bars from the area. This is what a great flood, the evidence of that looks like about 12,000 years later. Here's a giant gravel bar formed by the flood and eventually a lake backed up behind it here, right here. There is the outlet of Chuya Basin in the distance and this is the direction where this great flood flowed right down through here. Here's an area above the Katoon River. They call these suspension gravel deposits left behind by the flood. Here's a PDF I found on the Altai Mountain Flood. It says the Altai Mountains lie in the center of the largest land mass on Earth, the area most distant from any ocean. The Altai Mountains straddled the common borders of Russia, Kazakhstan, China, and Mongolia. The north slopes of this range in southern Siberia are drained by headwaters of the Ob River, which flows north into the Arctic Ocean. Towards the end of the last glacial period, about 11,000 to 13,000 years ago, surging alpine and outlet glaciers and the Altai dammed mountain rivers, creating large glacial lakes. These dams subsequently failed, causing catastrophic floods. The largest of these floods resulted from emptying two interconnected lakes on the Chuya River. This flood is referred to here as the Altai flood. So this happened in the exact window of the Younger Dryas. They say large ice dams created these huge lakes and i just have a little bit of a problem with that theory now i'm not saying this is exactly what happened or this is what didn't happen but that lake dam or that ice dam causing these huge lakes there is a bit of a problem with that as far as how they could have held such a massive amount of water that caused these floods here it talks about the lake filling up about 14,000 years ago. Surface area of the lake system at its maximum was about 12,000 square kilometers. 
could ice hold back a massive amount of water that big? Well, that is the big question. Here, look at some of the massive current ripples on the landscape here. There's some more. One I showed you earlier. Here are people standing on top of one of these current ripples. Gives you an idea how large, massive they are. Here's an area they describe as scab lands, same as in Washington here. And then in nearby in the Chagon River Valley, here are some petroglyphs on the right there. This was an excellent PDF showing signs of this catastrophic flooding from about 12,000 years ago from overhead picks and down on the ground here. Here are some more picks, a lot of glacial erratics in the area. In the pick here, you see the gentleman down there, and then you see the giant gravel bar deposited by the flood up above here. Here is a large argillite rock deposited by the flood waters here above the current valley floor. Here is a pick that says Paleo Pingos containing organic matter dated to 11,000 years ago. And I know Paleo Pingos is probably not a term a lot of you have heard about, but basically they are the remains of Ice Age flooding here. And I know there are Pingos in Northern Canada that are studied. I thought I would make a video on this today. A lot of us talk about Lake Missoula and what happened at the end of the Younger Dryas. Well, we have a place on the other side of the world here that has the exact same elements to it. So this should be covered. When you're looking into a mystery, you have to be thorough. You have to take account of really everything you can. And I've been slowly putting together the story of what happened at the young, end of the Younger Dryas. And this certainly is a piece to the puzzle. It took people a long time to accept the great flood that happened in the Montana and Idaho, Oregon, Washington region. Well, this place is compared to that exact flood, the features in the ground. Just imagine that being on top of one of them ripples. That's how big just the ripple left from the flood is. Could an ice dam have held back a lake that large to create all these features? Well, that is a question that we need to ask. Was there a single event that caused catastrophic flooding, something that we really haven't put our fingers on yet, or we are just starting to. Of course, people talk about a solar storm or a comet impact. And if you had a fragmented comet and it landed on different parts of the world, do you have the same evidence? Here's another look from the area. They talk about strata lines there on the right. It says strata lines in the Chuya Basin are mapped to an upper elevation of 2,200 meters. So that would make, and of course this is up at an elevation, that would make the minimum depth of the lake about 460 meters or about 1,500 feet deep. Could ice have held back a lake that deep? Ice isn't just a solid rock. There, you know, ice can have rivers flowing underneath it and through it and cracking. I'm sorry, I just don't think an ice dam could hold back a lake that big. Now, there is a large basin here. It says independent filling of Lake Curie would have reached a minimum depth of 440 meters or 640 meters if the two lakes acted together. But ice sickness at lower ice dams suggests a depth of more than 900 meters. But I just thought this was very interesting. This place in Russia, the only place the flooding here is compared to is the what we call the Lake Missoula flood that happened in the northwestern United States, southern Canada. Did a single event cause these two same disasters to happen at the same time? Was it a single event or are we kind of missing the story? Did we have multiple events or one major catastrophic flood? Once again, here's the Altai region of Russia, evidence of a massive flood coming through here at the end of the ice age. Here is Camas Prairie in Montana, pretty much the same story here. An ice dam caused a huge, massive, unimaginable lake to back up, and then it all burst at once. That is the story. Here is the West Bar ripples coming from Washington, not even close to Camas Prairie, but evidence of a massive flood coming through here in Washington. I will leave the links for these two PDFs below. They are, they are excellent. The one on Camas Prairie here, and then the one on the Altai Mountain Floods. These two floods are very comparable in every way, shape, and form. The big ice dam lakes that were created, the unexplainable amount of water that went over the landscapes to leave these features. 
is there another element to the story? And we kind of are fed the story that the glacial ice caps melted gradually. But if you look at the amount of energy that is explained at least in the standard stories, well, that isn't enough energy to melt what we assume was on the ice caps. And we still should have ice remaining from those today if something extraordinary didn't happen. Did something the same happen on both sides of the world? Well, I really wonder. Camus Prairie PDF says only comparable to the Altai flood in Siberia. The Altai flood PDF says flood discharge was estimated to be about 18 million CMS, and that's cubic meters per second, which compares with the Missoula flood estimated to have been about 17 million cubic meters a second. So the Altai flood, they are thinking, was just a little greater than the Lake Missoula flood that created the Camas Prairie and other features in the northwest of the United States. That's pretty amazing, but they compare almost identical here. That's pretty cool. These Ice Age floods have been recognized for about a century, but I think we are still kind of coming to terms with what happened. Did something that affected the whole Earth cause these Ice Age floods that are really on an unprecedented scale? Well, that's a good question, but that certainly echoes the story of the Lake Missoula flood coming from Montana. Hope you thought that was interesting. You all have very safe.